two years after the federal government met its target to resettle 25,000 Syrian refugees in Canada, hundreds of newcomers are putting down roots in New Brunswick, getting married, welcoming newborns, getting jobs and going to university. But with each milestone comes a renewed sense of grief for parents, siblings and loved ones left behind. Two ambitious young Syrians in St. John, Mohammed Ubaid and Riyam Abizid, are on to separate missions to be reunited with family members still living in the Middle East. Riyam Abizid and her sister, Razam, FaceTime with their mother, A-M-E-R-H. The two sisters have started new lives in St. John, but worry every day about their parents and brothers left behind in Jordan. Submitted, but the process, which involves partnering with sponsorship agreement holders, navigating federal government bureaucracy and raising tens of thousands of dollars, is not cheap, it's not quick, and it's not easy, said sponsorship committee volunteer Kate Wallace. Kate Wallace, left, poses with her friend Riam Abizid. Wallace is a volunteer on the committee hoping to sponsor Abizid's family. Submitted, for so many newcomers, bringing their family here is their dream, Wallace said. But they can't do it alone, they can't ever really move forward here while their family is still in limbo living as refugees, it's a shadow that hangs over every day, we will do anything last September, Mohammed Ubaid, 21, made headlines when he hosted a Syrian dinner at Taco Pica to raise money for his sister, D-U-A-A-A, 28, to come to Canada. While her brothers have been in St. John, working and attending school, D-U-A-A-A has lived in Lebanon in a two-room apartment with 13 other people. D-U-A-A-A, Ubaid flashes a peace sign in an undated photo. Her brothers haven't seen in her years. Submitted, in a handful of years, D-U-A-A-A was widowed and shot at as she moved constantly from one war-torn Syrian city to another. Ubaid's dinner fundraiser was a smash hit, it raised $8,000, half of which he sent to his sister to finance her escape from Al-Bab City to Beirut. But it wasn't enough money to bring her to Canada. Ubaid tries to call his sister every day, but it's not always possible, she just wants to come, he said. We sent to the government her information, and the government in Ottawa agrees to get her from Lebanon to here. But now she is waiting for the embassy in Beirut to do interview with her. When I talk to her, she says to me, nothing yet, they didn't text me yet, a poster for the second fundraiser Mohammed Ubaid will host at Taco Pica on April 22nd to raise money for his sister, Dua's, immigration to Canada. Submitted, Ubaid is hosting a second fundraiser on Sunday, April 22nd, at Taco Pica to raise part of the $7,000 in remaining settlement costs, we will do anything, that is what I am saying. Because we miss her, we want her with us. A girl there is not safe, it's still dangerous, and we hope people will help us. Feeling of incompleteness isn't arriving in St. John in January 2016, Riam Abbasid has spent countless hours giving back to the community, cooking dinners for St. Johners who are homeless and working as an interpreter while raising two young children. Last fall, she was awarded the 2017 YMCA Peace Medallion. Riam recently discovered she is pregnant with her third child. Happy news for her and her husband, Mohammed. Syrian refugees Riam Abazid and Mohammed al Nayar are expecting their third child. They hope their parents can eventually join them in St. John. CBC, but for Abazid, being pregnant is also the hardest thing. Her parents and two brothers are still refugees living in Jordan. Her husband's parents are in the same situation. When I was pregnant before, my mom was with me step by step, and now I feel like I am alone. It's a sad feeling, Syrian refugee family says first Ramadan in St. John is bittersweet. One might think the process would be easier for someone like Riam, Wallace said. But that hasn't necessarily been the case. A lot of people know her, and she's kind of a poster child for integration. And yet there's so much loss and pain, and a feeling of incompleteness to have your family so far away, and your country still war-torn. Cost is obstacly a big part of the problem, as Ubaid has realized, is money. Settlement costs can range from $13,500 for a single person, to $28,200 for a family of four. It's a huge financial target for newcomers who are just getting settled themselves. They can't ever really move forward here while their family is still in limbo living as refugees. It's a shadow that hangs over every day, Kate Wallace, sponsorship committee volunteer on top of that, there's the bureaucracy, which Wallace said can be fairly overwhelming, even for us who live here, who are native English speakers and who are fairly intelligent people. Sponsoring a family member's immigration means working with a sponsorship agreement holder, as well as a community sponsor. It involves submitting documents, photos, a financial profile, proof of funds held in trust, and other materials to demonstrate the support the newcomer will have after arriving in Canada.
Mohamed Ubaid with fellow Taco Pico workers Ben Morgan, Yanari Basariel and Fernando Bregel. It was Fernando, Wright, who came up with the idea to host the fundraiser at Taco Pica. Julia Wright, CBC, the sponsorship process is complicated, Abizid said, we need a high level of English to understand, and we are still learning here. Dot dot dot. In Syria, we can go to someone we know who has experience. Here, we can't. We have to look online, community can help after the paperwork is assembled and sent to Ottawa, it's a waiting game, Wallace said. After the application is received, the wait ranges from a minimum of 18 months to as long as two years from sending the information off, to when sponsored family members actually arrive. Ubaid is trying to raise $11,000 to sponsor his sister's immigration with the support of his employer, St. John Restaurateur Santos Ruyan, left. A second fundraiser for DUAAA, Ubaid will be held at Taco Pica on April 22. Julia Wright, CBC, Ubaid knows it's a long process but he's focusing on fundraising. That's the part he can control. He hopes Sunday's fundraiser will be great like first time. A lot of people will come without support from the community. He could be waiting a long time, but Ubaid, Abizid, and other Syrians hoping to be reunited with their families aren't giving up hope. For a lot of people, Wallace said, bringing their family here would give them, if not closure, a great sense of relief from what the war has taken from them.